Welcome to Piano Video Lessons. I'm Lisa, and today we're working on Grade 1 Piano Technical Exercises and Etudes. This is Unit 1 of Year 2. So in our last lesson, we worked on the chromatic and contrary motion scales of C. So that was the last of the major scale exercises. And today we're working on another etude. This one is called The Polite Child by Cornelius Gurlitt. And it's found on page 14 of your ebook. And on page 15 are the practice notes that go along with this lesson. So let's get started. First thing I'll do is I'll play this piece for you so you get to hear how it sounds. Here we go. Alright, so as with any etude, there are some technical skills that we're working on gaining by learning this piece. And they're outlined here at the top of the page. It says, uh, focused in this etude is the drop lift two note slurs in the right hand and a controlled even scale in the left hand. So let's go ahead and look at that right away. The left hand has a really nice, simple pattern. It starts with five on C, and it's going to move all the way up the C scale, finishing on the note C. So we get all the way to here, just playing the C scale. Then we reverse it, going back down, tucking our thumb under to G, and making our way all the way down to the bottom. So that's nice and straight ahead. Now, the right hand, it's a little more complicated. It does a fair bit of moving from place to place, although not too much. So if we look at the beginning, we see it starts with one, and the reach here is a sixth, and we've been talking about sixths ever since we did our uh, solid triads and inversions lesson. And in fact, these two notes here that we outline at the beginning, they're the outside of a first inversion C triad. So it starts off with one and up a sixth. And then in the next measure, we have four and down a fourth. Then we have two up a skip to a flat, and then three and down a skip. Then we have to move our hands. We're gonna move our thumb up to B and we're gonna open it a sixth, just as we would in a G major first inversion triad. So this, is like a first inversion, then we're going to play F sharp, down a fourth, to skip, not a sharp anymore. Sharps only apply until the bar line, and then we finish with two notes here on C. On the next line we have to move again. We have to move our two all the way down to this E, and then up a third, and then G, down a fourth. Place your two on F sharp, and then C, then four on B, down a skip. Then we go way down here to B below middle C and up a seventh, so that's a big reach. And then four and down a fifth with our thumb. That's a bigger reach than we usually play for a fifth. Then we're gonna hop down and play the last notes. So I want you to do that as a little bit of an exercise for this piece, which is to play the first note of each group and say what it is, so such as E, and then say what's next, up a sixth. You can either just think it or reach it. So um, if you reach it, you wanna make sure you're touching the right note, but you wanna feel the drop, and then B, and then G, up a third, A, down a third. B up a sixth, F sharp down a fourth, D up a skip, and then a third. And then moving E up a third, G down a fourth, F sharp, whoops, F sharp up a to the up to the fifth, which is gonna be C, F sharp up to C, B down a skip, B up a seventh, G down a fifth. A up a second, C. Now, this time we'll play all of those notes, but I want you to think about that action of dropping and then playing with a lift. So the first note is heavy and the second one is light. Drop, lift, drop, lift, 
Job lift. Job lift. Job lift. Job lift. Drop. Now these little guys here are rests. We're in three eight time, so this music is going to count the eighth notes, and so that's going to give us one two three one two three. And when we play with both hands, the left will play on one, and then two, uh, sorry, I'm looking here, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, getting louder, two, three, one, two, three, cross over, two, three, drop, lift, and rest. So here we have one, two, and then three. So what you're seeing uh, as a rest there is an eighth rest. So we start off the music with the right hand playing a dotted quarter note, and the dotted quarter, anytime we see a dot after a note, it adds half of the value of whatever's in front of it. So normally a quarter note holds for one beat, uh, or one quarter qu beat in quarter time, in this piece of music, we're in 3-8 time. So what we're actually counting are the eighth notes. And so a, a dotted quarter, an, a quarter note first holds for two eighth notes, one, two, and then the dot is going to make it hold for the third one. So this is going to be a three beat note in 3-8 time. Does that make sense? I hope so. Um, so when we get to the end of this line, the last thing we have is a simple quarter note. And the quarter note then is going to hold for the equivalent of two eighth notes. So we'll count one, two, and then we're finishing with an eighth rest. And that's what it looks like. So this is an eighth note. This is an eighth rest. All right. So the idea here is to get used to dropping and lifting dropping and lifting. And it's, a, it's an action that happens from the entire arm, including the wrist. We talk a lot about, you know, having a relaxed hand position. Super important when this happens, but when you play that first E, you're going to land on it. And then when you play this, the C, you're going to play it down. And as you play it down, you're going to lift up. This prepares you to drop on the next note. My wrist goes down a little bit, this really gives a very light action to my thumb. So as I play my thumb, it's gentle, but I lift up. Now I land with my two, wrist goes low, which gives a quieter sound to the other note. Now three, landing on A with low wrist, lifting up. Here we go, drop, lift. And my wrist lifts my whole hand up, drop, lift, rest, drop, lift, hold, to lift. So you really want to start to listen to that drop lift. And anytime you see a two note slur like this, it's always going to feel like a strong note and then a lift. So it's a drop lift sound. And this is very um, stylistic for classical music in the classical era. And Cornelius Gerlitt was a classical composer, so no surprise that he uses this technique. So that's the essential learning um, uh, tidbit <laughs> for this particular piece. And when we play through it, you'll want to practice pretty slowly. So you can really listen. And now we're going to start to get louder because it says crescendo. You might also notice that the right hand is louder than the left hand because it's playing more of the melody than the left hand is. Up a seventh. So that's seventh. We've talked about sevenths before. Uh, we'll see a space up to a space, and this is an octave, B to B, so a seventh B to A. You can get used to that distance, and a good way to do it is to let your hands hang down, and then try to open your hand and have it ready. So you can even see here that if every finger at the top of my hand is covering a note, I'm going to have a skip of two there. So if I kind of um, open my hand in preparation for this reach of distance, then I'll have a seventh. 
If I was to play an octave, I would be sort of more aiming my hand in this size of opening. So that's a really good exercise to do. And um, the next thing is a fifth, but not with a five one. It's an open fifth with a four one. And again, this is something that as we learn more advanced music, we have to be prepared for. We won't always play a fifth with one five. Sometimes we're coming from this distance, and then it makes sense to play our four and just bring our thumb in one note. So again, we've got this opening with one note skipped over. So here, we'll play a fifth, but with fingers four and one, then we're gonna move two, three, four. So as you learn this piece, I really want you to look at the intervals between the notes to see what's happening. Let's see what it says here. Um, can you see the left hand's pattern? It's a long scale. Look for the types of rhythm used in this piece. We've outlined them. What are the different types of touch that you have to use? Well, we've got the drop lift. And does this piece use slurs or ties? So we've seen ties in some of our other pieces. Uh, the first etude, the study in C, used a tie. When you play a tie, it's connecting two notes that are on the same line or space in the music. When you see a slur, the notes are different. So one of them here, I'm not drawing this very well, but you can see that the notes are not the same note. So the slur indicates the connected different notes and the tie connects to same notes so that they keep on holding and you don't replay because you're still holding that note. So what does this piece use, slurs or ties? Well, it uses a drop lift two note slur. Um, it asks you to look through the entire right hand and name the intervals. Remember, even numbered intervals have two notes of the same kind, both line or both space, and, uh, a line and a space. Whoa, even numbered intervals have two notes of the same kind, line or space. Odd numbered intervals have one line note and one space note. Well, I think I just found an error. I will have to fix this. All right, so the correct thing it should say, and we'll say this when you receive yours, uh, two notes of the same kind. Remember that even numbered intervals have one note of each kind, one line note and one space note. And the odd numbered intervals have um, both line notes or both space notes, two of the same kind of note. Okay. This is what happens when you proofread things as you're using them. Practice the drop lift motion and feel the weight of your arm. So that drop lift, and you can practice this on a tabletop. It's almost like slow motion trampoline for your hand. And then it says, um, practice the right hand on a tabletop, just thinking about finger numbers. So one, five, four, one, two, four, three, one, one, five, four, one, two, four, one, three, and two, four, four, one, two, five, four, two, one, five, four, one, rest, two, three, four. And so you can practice just your right hand thinking about the finger numbers. You can do the same thing naming the intervals. So you could play uh, one sixth, four fourth, two third, three third, one sixth, four fourth, two third third. And the same thing for the rest of the piece. And then it says to make a practice plan. So you have to decide how to divide this piece up for practicing. It's quite convenient to divide it by two measures here, or two lines of music, and then these other two lines. You can also work hands separately. Now, the checklist to know um, how you'll know when you've got this piece learned, similar to other pieces, you'll know that you've got correct notes and rhythm, you're using consistent fingerings that are practical, you're keeping a steady beat counting to three, you're lifting at the ends of your slurs, and you're looking for the dynamics where it says here to play piano, and then it says crescendo, and crescendo is to get gradually louder and it doesn't stop until you get to the next dynamic marking. So crescendo, there's an abbreviation for it there and I'll spell it out. There's a pizza named after this, Rising Crust Pizza <laughs> by McCain's I think, um, but it's gradually getting louder. And then here that says dim, and dim is short for diminuendo and this diminuendo is the opposite 
diminuendo, and these are Italian words. Diminuendo is gradually getting softer, and it ends here at the piano marking. Um, so when you're checking on your progress, a best practice is to perform it for your phone, record yourself doing it or some kind of camera, then watch it back a few times. And each time you watch it, note the different things that you could be doing to improve or maybe you've achieved them. Uh, some practice tips here. Uh, practicing away from the piano is an excellent way to reduce the amount of stimulation you're getting when you practice. So sometimes we really do just need to to figure out which fingers come next. And hearing wrong notes is very distracting. So if you can take it uh, one step down and just work on the fingerings at a tabletop, that's super um, helpful. And it also says here the piece looks deceptively easy. It's tricky to master the slurs and the position shifts in the right hand. So give yourself lots of, of grace with this one. Take your time. Keep it slow when you're practicing and try to relax. Um, it says if you're stopping and starting, practice more slowly or take the hands apart and work them one at a time. And to keep the left hand softer than the right, you can try ghosting the left hand while you play the right hand out loud. So let me show you what that means. You would ghost the left hand, which means you'd go like this. Five, four, three, two, one, three, two, one. So I was touching and using the fingers that I was naming, but I was not playing them out loud. Then when I do allow myself to play them out loud, it's easier to play them a little bit more softly than the right hand. All right, so that's it for the polite child. I'm going to go back over this and play it through one more time from the beginning so that you get to hear the whole thing. In our next lesson, we're going to be working back on some technical exercises. I like to flip back and forth between scales and chords and pieces because it's very boring to do all the technical in a row without doing any pieces. We're going to hop on back and start working on minor scales in our next lesson. So here I go performing for you one more time, The Polite Child, and I'll see you in the next lesson.